Hello. Well, today I uh, thought about doing something just a little different, um, in the sense that uh, this is uh, in the next uh, few videos or so regarding talking about movies. I'm going to look at some uh, of the Alfred Hitchcock films I have in the Criterion Collection. Um, and I thought a good place to start uh, would be the oldest one I have uh, so far, which is uh, The Man Who Knew Too Much, um, which is the original, uh, the 1934 uh, film, starring, um, you know, amongst other people. Uh, of course, uh, Peter Lorre. Um, and... Um, Leslie Banks as Bob Lawrence, and the best as Jill Lawrence, or Jill Lawrence, yeah, or, uh, you know, Peter Lorre, of course, as Abbott, and uh, Frank v Vosper as Ramon, Clive, uh, played by Hugh Wakefield and um, Nova Pilb uh, Pilbeam as... Uh, Betty Lawrence, um, and, uh, yeah, there's, you know, it's one of, uh, you know, this is one of Hitchcock's, uh, films from, of course, the 1930s. He, uh, of course, remade this film in 1956, uh, uh, with James Stewart as the lead, you know, in this film, you know, uh, uh, a British family goes to uh, Switzerland uh, for a vacation and also uh, there's a, a clay shooting uh, competition with uh, uh, where uh, Jill is involved in. She's uh, very good at uh, clay pigeon shooting and um there's a there's a Frenchman, um, Louis Bernard, who's a friend of theirs, uh, and uh, you know he uh, gets uh, in a way it's like the catalyst of the uh, the events that follows is you know uh, he gets shot and uh, from there uh, things uh, of course go uh, unfold and so. What happens is, uh, you know, Louis uh, uh, tells Jill uh, something important regarding this information that uh, will be important, and then she you know, tells her husband Bob, and he goes to his room and finds what is hidden in the, and then this whole, you know, all this is things just unravel from there um you know their daughter is not uh looked up at, at the time because you know everything is going on you know and uh peter lorry is there you know uh, being great as always as the villain and uh yeah it, this is a this version of the film seems to be one that not too many people talk about and honestly you know the plot's in terms of tone, uh, the tones are very much similar to one another. Um, plots aren't the exact same uh, per se. And then again, it's been a while since I've seen the 56 uh, uh, film, but having rewatched this and recalling. Uh, the 56 version I can recall certain differences and um, you know, I, it might be best if one day you know when I rewatch the 56 version and talk about that I might also rewatch this film uh, just before that way the differences are more apparent uh, for me as opposed to just trying to go off from memory of a film I haven't seen in uh, some years um but you know this is a, a definitely an excellent film uh 
Hitchcock himself said the difference between uh, this and the 56 is this was uh, made by like a you know like a very good amateur or an amateur at least and um, the, the remake was done by a professional but basically don't take the quote from him at, at face value um, even then this is a uh, is still an excellent film uh, you know the acting is really good um, some really good uh, 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 features here with an interview from Guillermo del Toro uh, illustrated Hitchcock an extensive interview with Alfred Hitchcock from 1972 um, audio excerpts from Francisco Truffaut's legendary 1962 interviews with Hitchcock um, a, a demonstration of the restoration of the film and yeah and of course there's commentary um, this is a great uh, edition of the film um i am of course more familiar with the 56 film in the sense that i've seen that more um and i got this years ago watched it enjoyed it and um it might have been one of the last times i ever really saw the 56 one because i think it was like i found it like streaming somewhere or maybe it was on tv somewhere i don't recall exactly but i so not that that long before and uh, seeing this because I had you know ordered this uh, got it and then I also uh, noticed that uh, the, the one with James Stewart uh, was somewhere watched that and then not too long after got this and honestly uh, it's a f fantastic film you know, very good uh, suspense. Um, you know, Hitchcock, of course, you know, master suspense. Uh, you know, uh, even in a film like this that would eventually be remade by Hitchcock, you know, the suspense is still there. It's very, it's still very effective, you know. You know, came out in 1934. It's still very effective today. Um, and that, I think that's just uh, the talent of Hitchcock as well as everybody were involved in the film um you know from the writing and the acting and just you know just everybody everybody involved gave their all did an incredible job and uh you know honestly you know and peter laurie is really uh you know a standout um but he usually is uh in many ways, you know, even if he's just in there for a few scenes, like, you know, in Casablanca, he's a very good standout. Um, of course, you know, uh, Humphrey Bogart, Bogart and uh, Ingram Bergman are the stars, of course, and everyone remembers them, but, you know, Peter Lorre, of course, isn't in that film too long, but even then, no matter how short he's in it, he, he manages to be memorable in any way, either typically is often the bad guy um you know he didn't always get to be the good guy often you know i guess perhaps it's he has a very spe uh, specific look to him that just like you know if you're going to cast him in anything you know the villain or uh, bad uh, a bad guy if not the villain you know a bad guy or even uh you know, even if he might be a good guy, perhaps might be like you know, make him make people think yeah he could be a bit untrustworthy, just because, you know he kind of has a sinister look to him uh, to an extent, but not. But you know, uh, from what I've heard of about people talking about Peter Lorre, he was, you know, uh, you know, very talented, but also very you know, uh, a very good guy. Um, um, it's been a while since I also <laughs> looked up Peter Lorre quite a bit, but I like his films. I like him. He's just a very, he has a very good presence. Um, and he had a pre great presence in this film. Um, everybody, you know, uh, 
Yeah, I didn't talk about too much of what all happens because, you know, because uh, I think that for this version, you know, not too many people might, you know, have seen this specifically. And, uh, you know, if you see it, uh, you know, at Barnes & Noble or um, find it online anywhere, I think it's worth picking up. Um, streaming you know there's the criterion channel of course but um it could be streaming elsewhere too um and there of course there are non-criterion versions of this film um on dvd and blu-ray i'm sure uh, it's really a an incredible film um i'm glad i rewatched this it's it i just sort of forgotten how just how good this ver version of the film is. Um, I might prefer the 56 uh, film. And again, I like James Stewart. I think he and Hitchcock did some great work together. Um, but even then, um, this is still great. And it's been a while since I've seen the 56 film. Uh, so, you know, to say which I really like better... Um, I guess sort of like apples to oranges, I guess, you know, in a way like they're uh, similar in the sense of like, the, you know, the man who knew too much, you know, of course, it's sort of a plot goes on where a, a series of events happened and somebody obviously knows t uh, too much. <laughs> and, um, things hang on the balance of, um, of uh, like people like you know keeping their mouth shut and uh, if you do call the authorities or let somebody know like would you be able to resolve things in time or would that just escalate and make things worse you know and um, this is a uh, an excellent film Usually, I do not like to talk about what I'll do, talk about next time, but since I'm going to just talk about these anyway, in the next uh, few days, I'm going to talk next about uh, The 39 Steps, starring Robert Donat, Donat and um, then The Lady Vanishes, um, with um, Dame May Woody. Margaret Lockwood. Finster. Yes, beautiful Margaret Lockwood. Traveling across Europe by train. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, these, uh, uh, can't, uh, I can't wait to, uh, discuss these more, um, next time. I like to watch these uh, multiple times uh, just before I, uh, you know, watch them uh, or talk about them with you. That way, you know, they're even more fresh. Like, I watched this a couple times. Uh, watched it last night just to sort of uh, get a feel of it before I just uh, up and record it. Of course, this is now going to be uh, shown in February, but, you know, I will definitely... Um, watch these next two films to see uh, just to get, make sure my thoughts are uh, as together as I can um, and I might not talk too much about them in the sense that uh, people might not have seen these you know I've noticed sometimes uh, the, the 40 seems to be a big thing with Hitchcock where people really start to look in terms of beginning like not that people don't look at the 30s or even earlier stuff like you know like the 20s and others uh, years prior you know because he's made silent films before the uh, sound but you know uh, these are uh, excellent films the man who knew too much is fantastic um, you enjoy Hitchcock and you haven't seen the original 1934 film 
I recommend it. I think it would be really great. Uh, um, uh, and also, you know, and, and perhaps like you know, watch uh, the 1956 uh, film either. Maybe not right afterwards, you know, but perhaps uh, some time later to sort of like give a bit of a break. Um, but yeah, it's a you know great film. Great cast and just uh, you know, great early thriller uh, of what we would uh, like expect from a Hitchcock. You know, he's really uh, he was very talented. I know there's a lot of, uh, said about him regarding you know behind the scenes stuff. And, you know, and with like like you know womanizing and being. You know, not good to certain uh, performers. Um, you know, of course, things like that are always unfortunate to hear about, um, uh, especially when someone is as talented as Hitchcock. Um, but you know, you try to separate uh, the person from their work, and uh, as much as you can, um, if that starts to seep into the, their work, then of course that's very hard to do. Um, but for these films, I don't really think that's a, a real problem, uh, at least not that I know of, uh, regarding these early films. So that should not be a problem for me at all. Um, I know things like the birds and stuff, that's another story. But uh, fantastic film. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's all. That's all I have to say. Um, have you seen this film? Uh, have you seen the uh, the remake uh, that he did in uh, 1956? Um, uh, which one do you prefer? Do you prefer this one featuring uh, Peter Lorre? Or do you prefer the one with James Stewart? Uh, or do you like them both equally? Uh, I'm sure there are those who like both equally. And that's completely fine. Uh, uh, but anyway, I hope uh, all of you uh, have a great day and a great weekend and a great week. And I'll see you all next time. Take care. Bye.